Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 107 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. Once again, I am your host, Brent Coley, an educator in beautiful and currently very wet and rainy Southern California. Joining me today, another Southern California uh, educator, teacher, who's also, we were talking before we started recording, it's very cold outside. The one, the only Lisa Mo. Lisa, how are you doing? Hey, Brian. Well, thank you for having me. I'm doing awesome. But as you said, I am freezing right now. So <laughs> exactly. And it's it's funny when we say that it's like for anyone who's like on the East Coast or the Midwest or something like that, like freezing for us in Southern oh, yeah. California, it's like I think it's in the low fifties or the high but that's cold for us, right? Completely. No, my cousins in the Midwest and Chicago would say like, oh, this is barbecue weather. I'm like, oh, yeah. God, shorts, shorts and tank top. Like yeah. I watched football games yesterday when it was all snowy and cold with yes. the you know, factor of five. But I but I understood. Yes, it is definitely cold. So, well, Lisa, I'm excited about our chat and, and having you share kind of your background and your experience to hopefully encourage anyone listening. But for anyone who is not familiar with you, give us a little background. Who is Lisa. All right. Well, I am Lisa Mo. Uh, I'm known on, on social media as Miss Mo Teaches, and I have been in the classroom now for about seven years. I say credentialed in the classroom because I have been working in the school since I was 15 years old. Um, so my whole background is education, basically. Um, I have my master's in teaching from UC Irvine, and then I went back to school and at my master's of science in educational technology, which was very timely because at the time of receiving it, I was questioned, well, why technology? And I just feel like this is where we're headed. And then a little pandemic happened and <laughs> and it just really became like, you know, there, there was a purpose there. So um, just since then, I just continue to add on into STEAM and gamification and engagement and just continuously learn and share. I love sharing. So, yeah. Absolutely. And and that's, I have been following your work online for a while. And was it last weekend or a couple weekend? About a little over a week ago, we had a, a local ed tech conference and you and I, we were able to talk in person. And that's when I wanted, it's like, oh, you need to have a podcast. <laughs> um, you mentioned gamification. That's something that I have seen you present um, at conferences before on the kind of the topic of, you mentioned engagement and bringing game-based learning or game shows and things like that. And I thought, gosh, what a, I'm such a huge believer in making learning fun. Learning doesn't have to be old school, like 19, we're in rows all the time and it, it looks like school. Learning doesn't have to look like school. And I think you are a perfect person to tell us about that. So I'm going to pass the virtual mic to you. It's like, so when you say gamification, why are you so passionate about this? Yeah, for sure. I think with gamification, I know we've touched on this. There's so many different meanings and understanding of what that looks like in the classroom. And is that, you know, uh, video games in the classroom? Is that coding in the classroom? Is that um, and for me, it's a combination of all of that. And at the end of the day, gamification is is that student engagement, is making learning fun. And so for me, as I said, I do have a full background in education. However, I have a very diverse background as well in that um, I used to intern for Conan O'Brien. And I was able to see just how he brings, you know, that level of energy to his his set every day. I mean, majority of the day you are in a cubicle, you are working, but when it is showtime, it is high energy. And I loved that aspect of it. So as I entered the world of teaching, I wanted to bring that energy into my classroom and that mindset that it isn't just a cubicle job or it isn't just a classroom where they are sitting and listening to me. I want their voices to be heard as well. Um, and as I said, my background, I... I have been on two game shows, so I have one big on Price is Right and Let's Make a Deal. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and I'm actually only allowed one more game show in my lifetime, so it has to be good. Uh, but just bringing that same 
energy, that same level of fun and learning and letting my students know that it's it's beyond the content. It's not just what I'm teaching them or what they're learning from me, but the skills that they're going to get along in the process of social emotional, that confidence that it's okay to share your voice, to get excited about something and want to share it with others and bring that with them for the rest of their lives. So that's really just taking, you know, in a nutshell, me and bringing that to the forefront of my classroom. And I think that, gosh, that is two things. Number one, I'm so, we, we talked about this a little before we started recording that for anyone listening, it's so important to take what is pat what you are passionate about and bring that in so for you gamifications or the energy in in interviewing with Colin O'Brien and I mean like when I was in the classroom I mean I I loved Lord of the Rings I'm a nerd in that way as I mean so I was so and I brought a lot of that in whether it was figurines whether it was putting that into the word problems whether it was introducing just whatever it was and it got kids more because it Lord of the Rings is not traditional school. And I'm not, no. <laughs> it has, but it doesn't matter what it is. If you're if you're excited about it, chances are kids will be excited about it, or at least remember it. It's because it's not it's not traditional school. Now, I just have to ask, and I'm sure anyone listening, like, what'd you win? Are you, are you, <laughs> like, how, when you say win big, like, what does that mean? Oh yeah, no, I I love to talk about it. Uh, okay. <laughs> so on Price is Right, I I initially got called down you know, to contestants row and I had to bet on a bass guitar and I don't, you would think I knew what I was doing that entire show. I I couldn't even hear. I was too excited, but I said $1,600. It ended up being on the nose. So I I won the bass guitar and an additional $500. Um, (laughs) So then I got to go up and play, um, you know, like it was like a big X, virtual X game where you had to match the prices in the middle of what I'm going to win and again on TV it shows me playing that thing for like eight seconds like it just looks like no in reality I had to ask Drew Carey like three times I was like I I don't remember what you just said because I was too excited (laughs) and I ended up winning um a 60 inch smart TV it was like a 3D smart TV with the whole like everything that goes with it so like the 3D glasses and like the remotes and all that um and then also, um, like Kate Spade, you know, shoes and, and wow. purses and glasses and accessories. I then moved on to the wheel and which is, they tell you, they kind of like prepare you, um, how to spin it. And then also like when you lose, you're going to, you know, exit over here. Yeah. And everyone that I was with is like, you know, yeah, sure. But I'm, I'm like, when I lose, like, no, like where's that growth mindset? And I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not going to lose. So the two people ahead of me spun an 80, both of them got an 80. So everyone in the crowd knew like, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be these two. Um, Pretty much already like, goodbye, goodbye, Lisa. I spun in, I spun in 95. So I just bye bye to them, made it to, you know, the showcase showdown. Now the issue is I I joked ahead of time saying, if I get called down, actually I said, when I get called down, because I was like, I'm going to do this. Um. If it's anything to do with cars or jewelry, I have no idea. Like I have, I have zero idea. And um, my fellow opponent, which, which means your showcase is probably all cars and jewelry. Oh yeah, my fellow opponent passed hers to me. And when you're on these shows, you can't hear. Like it, it's so hard to hear. And so I didn't even know what I was playing for. But ahead of time, like I was told, like my brother was like, if you go down there, like say this number. So I did. Um, and then she ended up being just a little bit closer than me so she won the big showcase we're still friends to this day i always say that was the biggest win for me is her friendship oh, and uh, <laughs> but is... you don't have to pay taxes you know you have to pay taxes on all these prizes so i was good with not winning like that's yeah <laughs> that's true that's the the downside of winning something like that so that's awesome that's yeah. super what what an experience so then so you took you had personal experience yes. and brought that into your classroom. So tell me, can, give me an example of what 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 kind of gamification, what kind of activities have you brought into your classroom and how has it worked? So, you know, I think for any educator, we, we kind of start off 
with the typical like Jeopardy type thing, you know, trivia, let's answer questions. But I had to bring in that same energy of of being on a game show. And, you know, I come in with my mic and like, you know, a blazer and I, I make, I set the tone in my classroom. Like, this is what we're doing and we have the music playing and everything. But from there, I decided like, I'm going to start making this more of a choice board thing for them. So um, you know, start incorporating, which is something that I brought to my sessions as well, is a giant, you know, board of all the different activities or things we're going to be doing. But one of my biggest things, and, you know, I, I speak about this one often just because it has such an emotional effect for me, is during um, online teaching, during our distance learning days, <laughs> I had a student who would not turn on her camera would cover her face with her hair, would not engage in conversation. And her mom even told me, like, she she's like this 24-7. Like, she's just, you know. And I wanted her to feel like she belonged. Like, if I were in my classroom, we may still be dealing with this, but I would be able to speak with her more. Through a computer, it's it's hard, and you know, it's hard to, to get right there and say, it's okay to trust me, it's okay. So I was watching The Masked Singer one night, which is just, a ridiculous show in itself and I love it and I wanted my students to do book reports and now I know she's going to be like nervous about this but I was thinking about it and I was like what if I did the masked reader now all of us could disguise ourselves all of us don't have to show our face we could hide our voice we could and I just got so excited about this and so I started kind of creating it and implementing it um she ended up doing it hilarious you know we she got to put a personality that we didn't know was there and from there forward i kept doing that with different things okay now we're gonna do this like you know we're gonna guess of who came up with this math problem or who came up with you know this mission project now we're just disguising but we're having fun with the characters you know developing all this these you know components to it and eventually that camera came on this personality came out just the other day. I saw, you know, I'm, I'm no longer working at that school site. She still keeps in contact with me. She's she just won the science fair in her district. She's going to go, you know, speak in front of people. And and she got there. And I know she always says it. It was that it was those opportunities, you know, for her to, to come out of her shell and and not fear coming out of her shell. Mm. So, you know, what a, what a powerful story about. I mean. I had a, I mean, well, first of all, I loved at the beginning, you said like coming in with the blazer and the microphone. And I mean, as you were telling me that story, I'm thinking every one of those kids, when they went home that day and mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or whoever it was that, that is caring for them, asked the, the age old question of, oh, how was school today? What'd you do in school today? And I can only imagine the look on them like, oh my gosh, Miss Mo, I had we played a game show. I mean, like that's the kind of thing that they're going to remember five, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And my goodness, hearing that, that student, you, you gave, you just made it comfortable for her. And that's what a great story. What a great story. <laughs> yeah. Um, any other, any other things that you've done? Yeah. So um, one of my other favorite is the book because I, I not will it it. Oh, the bachelor <laughs> yes. there we go okay <laughs> um and this one i continue to just develop and innovate you know like we all do when with a good lesson and you just keep creating so um you know i had seen different things online about these like book tastings and like ways for you know kids to kind of read a chapter and and see if they want to read it or you know share what they know I started doing this with different topics and so not just books, but like different subjects that they wanted to like study or research and kind of help guide them into those like essential questions that I want them to get to, but without giving it to them. And we would go to the library and I love doing this. So we go to the library and they have to pick out their like date, you know, like their book <laughs> and they read it, they get to know it. And then they have to compete in our class of like trying to get everyone to read their book so we'll do a book tasting style in the sense of the bachelor so we have like different rounds so the first round is the group date and now i change up these terminology i'm just you sure <laughs> i got you 
I've they're watched The Bachelor with my wife. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> they're uh, they're fifth graders. I try not to say dating, but you know, <laughs> but they they meet up and they read just just a you know the back of their book or just like a little synopsis that you know they wrote about their book. So if you read something, I'm going to read your little synopsis on it. If I'm interested in that book, I'm going to pick it to go to the next round. But if not, we kind of mark down like, no, no, no. I'm not giving, you know, my bookmark, which is our rose. I'm not going to give it. So I'm that's just going to say, when, when you accept this, what what is it? Will you accept this bookmark? That's all. Awesome. this bookmark. So then they go to the next round where they get to actually get to know that book that they chose. So now they're going to go on like a little date, you know, lack of a better term. They go and they read that story or they read a couple pages from it. Now, some of them get to learn right away. They judged a book by its cover. They did not like this book. They actually are not interested in it. But there's another book. And just like every great reality show, there's always, you know, time for redemption. So those books that got cast away, they come back. They oh, come back. Yes. <laughs> so, and those ones you actually find are the ones that actually were so good. They just were judged too soon. So it's just different levels of engagement and it's so much fun because they have to know their book they they have to be able to sell this book but at the same time they're getting to you know experience other books so they're excited when they finish this to read this next book and they already have a list of 10 other ones that they want to read within the class and they're all talking about it these are all books that they're hearing from their peers so it's just a really really fun way to get them reading and interested and like i said just moving into different topics you know i'll at, like especially at the end of like a unit they have to pick what was the most important thing in that you know in our math or in our social studies what was the most to you what did you feel was the most important thing that we need to know in this and they kind of battle it out that way and they kind of start to see wait i need to know this in order to get to here so again getting that engagement from them and they all feel part of it and that's my biggest thing is it's not me saying you need to read this it's them telling me miss well you need to read this like you have you know so just getting that student interaction and voice and building that relationship with them is huge that's just that just gives me gives me chills because if you're taking a the traditional like what would student rather do a traditional book report you read this book and write a book report or <laughs> have them engage in what you just said, taking something that's timely, <laughs> like The Bachelor. And again, my fifth graders, I was going to say probably not watch The Bachelor, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. They, they could be, or they've probably at least seen or or know of it. And like you said, you're able to adapt it and change some of the terminology so that you're not getting the... <laughs> yes. That's, that's just awesome. It reminded me of when I was in fifth, when I was in fifth grade, when I taught fifth grade, I remember it was when deal or no deal, like the original deal or no, not the Howie Mandel. Yes. But I think it was it, was it Regis? I think it may have been Regis. I, I, I can't even remember. I think it was Regis Philbin was the host or I, I don't even remember. But I did every Friday. I just made it and it wasn't so much like a, a lesson, but we had, it was a fun way to reinforce um, homophones. I had a weekly homophone challenge where I would put, I had a little bulletin board by the door that said like, what do you call an un un an undecorated flying machine? So the answer is a plain plane, P-L-A-I-N, P-L-A-N-E. And every week I had a different homophone riddle there and kids could put their, put a little gas and put it in a little jar. And then at the end of the week, if they had turned in all of their assignments for the week, I, I would pull a name, and if, if the student had completed all the assignments for the week, he or she got to play Deal or No Deal. And I had the computer, like I had found a computer thing, and obviously we weren't playing for money, but I had like a conversion chart where it was like, it was like for, for pieces of licorice or stickers or something like that. And they could, like a million dollars was equal to like a hundred pieces yeah. of or a hundred smelly stickers, which is like a million dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... And and every Friday we finished we finished. That's how we finished our week. And That's so awesome. <laughs> it's like 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 deal. And I would I mean I didn't have the blazer, but I would I would totally be like deal or no deal. Yeah. And the, the whole class is like, what? 
like <laughs> squishy bean. And they'd be like, no deal. <gasps> yeah. and it was just, and it was so cool that three different times I had a student win a million. Oh my but God. it was just such a fun way because I knew that they were heading off into the weekend mm-hmm. with something that was, it was reinforcing a, a, a literary concept, homophones, on the ground, I mean, things like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't hard to do, it, but it was fun. And I have to, I've talked with students who have come back later and be like, oh, I remember doing the weekly homophone challenge. It's just, so something like that could be so easily replicated. And I got the idea from a buddy who used to teach sixth grade. He was a big Denver Broncos fan. <sighs> and he loved John Elway at the time. And his was John Elway trivia. <laughs> so it wasn't like he just had like, again, when I use that example, did that have anything to do with academics? No. But he took a passion that he had, Denver Broncos, and he brought it into his classroom and got his kids excited about something that he was excited about, which got them excited about coming to class. And I just, the whole moral of that story for me is that it doesn't all have to be academic. No, no. I, you know, I wanted to say this earlier too. I love when you talked about like how you, with the Lord of the Rings, you know, it's, these things aren't academic. It's hard to see because I blurred my background, but yeah. this is a Rocky poster. And I, I bring Rocky Balboa into my classroom. I always have a Rocky wall in my classroom. And again, these kids, they come in, some of them have heard of Rocky, some of them have not. By the end of the year, I always have these like, you know, Rocky and Sylvester Stallone, like, total fans but that's not my goal obviously (laughs) but just that i'm passionate about something that i i want that message for them and for me with rocky it's he's an underdog that that never gives up he gets back up he gets you know hit and they know his whole speech we say it we say it at the end of every day it ain't about how hard you hit it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward that's how winning is done and at the very first day that i meet them they think you know and crazy now they get to know me they hear from their peers their you know past classmates who they're entering into but learning right away like you're going to come up with your own boxer name and that's something that we have in our classroom so it'll be like you know miss yes i can mo and so every time they're about to take you know a test and we don't say test in my class we say smarty party every time they're about to go defeat that smarty party i call them by their boxing names so they're entering in again that gamification or just that engagement of a character almost like all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go fight this test i'm gonna go fight this smarty party show them what i got and even if i get knocked down i'm gonna get back up again and again it's just something that i brought in through my own silly you know just love but, con- <laughs> but they connect that's a connection again and relationships are so important between the teacher and the student and you're connecting. They're like, "Oh, Miss Mo loves that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love that too." Yeah. And my Lord of the Rings. I had a student one day who comes in with one of those cardboard, like that you would see in a movie theater. <laughs> yes. The, the life size, like that they would have in the movie theater. He got it from a Barnes and Noble that he saw. He's like, Mister Coley would love that, and he asked the manager, "Can I have that for my teacher?" The manager gave it to him, so he comes in. Nothing to do with academics. <laughs> But that, but that had been a connection with that student. So once that he asked the manager at Barnes and Noble, "Can I have that for my teacher?" No Barnes, or no academic connection mm-hmm. at all. But there was a connection between him and me. So, and I'm still. That's what women has done. I'm dictionary <laughs> your your Rocky quote there. So that's <laughs> honest. I absolutely love that. Uh, and my apologies for the bad uh, slide impression. <laughs> And that was awesome. <laughs> but, but uh, well, Lisa, I'm. This is an audio only podcast, so people listening right now would not see the smile. I mean, <laughs> I am really digging this conversation. I I'm pretty confident that anyone listening right now could try something like what you said. They could replicate what you like. The whole butchler, yes. butchler. I mean, like that's something that can be replicated. And if it's not that something else the masks the mastery i mean it doesn't matter what it is take something that you're passionate about take a i mean anything and it doesn't have to be a big deal kind of like my uh deal or no deal that was that was just a last 15 minutes of every friday so yeah it doesn't have to be 
you know, anything that you're you're putting so much time into that it's like adding to your plate. Yeah. Make it something that that you enjoy that you know your students will enjoy. And you know, I yes, I am a costume person. I dress up. I you know, that's who I naturally am. But something I always remind teachers is I will never ask you to be me. I'm asking you to be the best version of you for your students. That's all I'm asking, you know. And so when you have those little things that you're passionate about, it is fun to figure out, like you said, putting a Lord of the Rings character in a math problem. Just those little things that humanize you to your students as well. And, you know, my students know that they are not to interrupt me in a small group unless the rock comes through the door with, you know, a Starbucks for me. They, you know, these, these little things. And so, you know, I have this rock Hello, it's literally his face that a student gave me uh, for my birthday. And it's, you know, it's in my classroom. Just those little things that when they see it, they think of me. And now we have that trust in the classroom. So, you know, just, well, just keep being you. Just yeah. Yeah. Being you. And, and the one thing I would add just to, to put a cherry on top of this conversation is that when you do something like that, like when I, I looked forward to the deal or no deal at the end of Friday. Oh, yes. It was fun. Yes. It's, it's, so it's like when you do something like, it's not just for the kids. Mm -mm. I no. Mean, it's, it, <laughs> we get something as the educator, as the teacher, we get something out of that too. So I, I would just, I mean, selfishly, it's not just for them. It makes it more fun for us too. So Lisa, thank you so much for, for sharing these awesome examples and and the story, I mean, that one about the mass reader, I mean, that's just, that doesn't get any better than that. Um, so you mentioned at the top, but give us again, if someone wants to connect with you online, what are your socials, your web, uh, your social media handles, your website, how can we get in touch with you? Yeah, on everything, I am Miss Mo Teaches, so M-I-S-S-M-O-E, Teaches. Um, if you can't remember my name, Lisa Mo, I am two Simpsons characters. Um, so just, you know, Lisa, <laughs> you need to remember that. Um, and you could see me if you're going to Spring Q. I will be presenting twice. Um, I'm doing, again, uh, similar to my session last year in the sense of similar title, new games, new ideas. We're ready to rock and roll. It's called Come On Down, Edutainment, Engagement, and Gamification as well as the room where it happens, innovation and steam in the spotlight. So I'm hoping to see you there and meet all of you and have a good time. <laughs> awesome. Yes, for you California educators, Spring Q, middle of March, I will be there. So I look forward to that. And Lisa, once again, thank you for taking the time. Uh, I appreciate it. And as I say so often, even if nobody else listens to this, I was edified by our chat. So thank you. And for everyone listening, thank you so much for listening. Hope you got something out of it. If you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to the podcast in wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or anywhere, any of the podcast um, catchers, or you can listen directly on the podcast page at my website, brandcoley.com. And until next time, have a good one.